I'd like to spend a little bit of time giving some more detail on the banker's algorithm. We saw discussion in the book. The banker's algorithm is an algorithm that can be used when there's multiple instances of a resource type. The allocation graph is not sufficient if there's multiple instances for a resource type. So instead, we need to use the banker's algorithm, which keeps track of how much is available and how much can be loaned out at any given time. When a thread enters the system, it needs to declare the maximum number of instances of each resource type that it may need. So I'm going to need this much of A, this much of B, this much of C. And then the system will use the information of what's already been given out and what's currently being requested to see if the new request can be honored and still leave the system in a safe state. So how are we going to do that? There are a number of data structures. This is a bit complicated, but I think we can work our way through it. There's a vector, so an array or list of available resources. How much is available right now of each type? Then there's max. This is a matrix, so the number of threads and the number of resources. So for each thread, how many of each resource will it be requesting? What's the maximum number that it would ever want? Then allocation, another matrix that's the number of resources that are currently allocated. So how much is currently being provided? Then need is uh, the final matrix that shows how many of each resource a thread might require in the future. So here on our slides, we have multiple instances. Each process must tell up front what its maximum use will be. When a process requests something, it may have to wait. So we're not going to fail or refuse requests, but you might have to wait. The important thing is that we can tell that if we allocate them and have people wait properly, then the processes that are not waiting but holding on to things will eventually finish return them, and then we can allocate them to the next process or thread that's requesting them and proceed. We have our data structures available, max, allocated, need. This is kind of a technical definition of the algorithm. I'm going to walk through an example. Here, we start with five processes, process zero through four, three resources, A, B, and C. Process zero, when it starts, it announces to the operating system, the most I will ever use is seven of A, five of B, and three of C. Process one enters and says, the most I will ever use is this. Process two, three, and four do the same thing. We're going to have an allocation matrix and a need matrix. I've named it might need to emphasize the fact that we don't know whether they're going to actually be used or just might be used. Then we start with an available number of resources. We have 10 of A, 5 of B, and 7 of C. This is the available resources overall at the beginning. First thing we're going to do is imagine that we've gotten to a point after some amount of time when we have a certain allocation already made. In this case, process zero, of the max that it might request, has currently 
requested and been granted one instance of B, of which there are five. Process one has been granted two instances of A, of which there are 10, and so on. So we can see that the total allocation at this point is seven of A, two of B, and five of C. We can, with simple arithmetic, just take the need, or the might need, and subtract allocation from max to get the need. P0 says that it's going to use a maximum of seven A's. It's currently using zero, so it still might need seven A. It says it might use five B's. It's using one, so there's a potential of four left. And process zero says that it could use up to three C's, of which zero is in use or allocated, so that leaves three that it might need. We can work our way through for each process and identify what the future needs would be. Now, we can say that if we started with 10 of A and seven are allocated, then our total remaining available for A is three. If we start with five Bs and two are allocated, three Bs remain available. If we start with seven, five are allocated, then we have two of C left. So at this point in our execution or in our time sequence, we've allocated some, we've updated our future needs, and we've updated our list of available. So at this moment, we've got three, three, two available. The question is, can we satisfy all these requests? Is there a path through which we can satisfy each of the requests? And we cannot satisfy P0 if it requests 743, so that will be impossible. P1, however, if it requests 1, 2, 2, that is possible. So we can satisfy P1. So let's say that we start this point in time with 3, 3, 2 available. We allocate 1, 2, 2 so that P1 has maxed out its needs. And then when it finishes, the question is what will be available? So we're able to satisfy this. Then let's take 332 was the original available. After it used and released this, it's then also going to be releasing the 200. So after process one exits, the total available resources should be 532. That is, 3 plus 2 is 5, 3 plus 0 is 3, 2 plus 0. So now, after P1 completes using all the resources that it wants and then exits, we now have 532 available. Well, let's start at the top again and look through. Can we satisfy P0 and let it run? No, that will not work. P1 has already finished. Can we satisfy P2? No, we don't have enough resources for P2 to run. Can we satisfy P3? Yes, we can. With 532 available and it wants 011, that's an easy solution. So we let P3 take all that it needs and finish. And then when P3 finishes and leaves, then the 211 that it had when we started this exercise plus the 532 will be left. And so now our new available will be 5 plus 2, 7, 3 plus 1, 4, 
2 plus 1, 3. So 7, 4, 3. At this point, with P3 finished, we have 7, 4, 3 available. Starting at the top again, will we be able to let P0 run with 7, 4, 3 available? Yes, that's exactly what we have. So we'll let process 0 take what it needs, since it's available, and then finish. When it finish, it releases everything that it was holding, including the 0, 1, 0 that was at the beginning of this. And now, 7 plus 0 is 7, 4 and 1 is 5, 3 and 0 is 3. So 7, 5, 3 is what is now available at the end of process 0. When process 0 terminates, we now have this much available. We continue down our list. With 753 available, will we be able to satisfy 600 left? Yes, we will. So we'll run process 2. Let it finish. When it finishes, then the things it already had, plus the newly acquired things, will become available. So 7 and 3 is 10, 5, 5. 10, 5, 5 is what's now available when process 2 finishes. Now, with 10, 5, 5 available, we have one more process left to run. Is process 4 able to run? It wants 4, 3, 1. There's 10, 5, 5. So yes, we can let process 4 run. With the 10, 5, 5 and 0, 0, 2, we're now going to have 10, 5, 7 as the total available when process 4 exits. So now we see that we have 10, 5, 7. All the processes are able to complete with out any deadlocks. So the system is in a safe state. Now it might not happen that it finishes in exactly that way, but we've demonstrated that it could finish in that way. So the system is in a safe state. Now let's start over again, keeping our same example of the maximum that they'll ask for, what they currently have allocated and what's available. So here we have five processes, our max, are available, what's allocated, and what might be needed. The one difference is in the question of what's been received. So notice process one at this point has a 200 allocated. If it asked for 102 and were given 102, then instead of 200, we'd have 302. Now, what does that do to things? Well, start by saying we now have a total allocation of 8, 2, 7. If we take the 10 minus 8, 2, 5 minus 2, 3, 7 minus 7, 0, we now currently have 2, 3, 0 available. Can we satisfy process 0? Is process 0 able to run? Well, doesn't look like it. So process zero is not going to run. Can process one run? Can we satisfy a request for 0, 2, 0 out of 2, 3, 0? Yes, we can. So we're going to do that. And then when that finishes, we're going to have 2 plus 3 is 5. 3 plus 0 is 3. 0 plus 2 is 2. So now we have 5, 3, 2 available. Okay, let's start at the top again. Can we satisfy a request for 7, 4, 3? No. We've finished process 1. Can we satisfy a request for 6, 0, 0? No. Can we satisfy a request for 0, 1, 1? Yes, we can. So we will let process 3 run. And process 3 runs. When process 3 finishes, we now have 743 available. 
that is the 532 plus the 211. We can now complete process 0, we can complete process 2, we can complete process 4. And so now we're all done. This again was where we had a larger allocation, where P1 requested and was given 102. Since we can satisfy these, we're going to say the system is in a safe state. Now let's take a look at this situation. Let's say that P4 had requested and received 330. Does this leave us in a safe state? What's been allocated? 1055 has been allocated. 002 is available. Can we satisfy process 0 with 002? No, we cannot. Can we satisfy process 1 with a 002 available? No. Can we satisfy process 2 with the resources available? No. Can we satisfy process 3 with the resources available? No. Can we satisfy process 4 with the resources available? No. So in this case, there is no path through which if each process requests all that it's said that it might want to request, that we'll be able to satisfy it. Now, if it happens that they don't, then we might. So if, for example, P4 just exited right now without asking for any more, then we could add the resources that it currently has back to our available, then work our way through looking for other processes that could finish. But as of right now, we are not in a safe state. There is no path through which any future requests could be satisfied completely. And so we're not currently in a deadlock, but we're in an unsafe state where we risk a deadlock. If anyone asks for more than two of C, then we will be in a deadlock state. That's what we want to avoid. So when P4 requested and received 330, that was an error. That was a mistake. We should not have given P4 330. We should have kept ourselves when P4 just had 002 in use so that we were in a safe state. At this point, we are not safe. Let's look at another example where P0. P0 starts this exercise with 010, and then if it requested and were given 020, then it would be at a 030 allocation. And our total allocation would be 847, which would leave a total available of 210. So now with 210, is there any way that we can find a path where all processes get the maximum that they would need and still complete? We can't run process 0. We cannot run process 1. We cannot run process 2. Process 3 also cannot run because it's using 1 of C and there's 0 available. Process 4 cannot run. So if we gave process 0, 0, 2, 0, or 2 instances of B, then we would have the system in an unsafe state. So here we should not have given process 0 the 0, 2, 0. So the general approach is we start by identifying what's available, what's been allocated, and what is the maximum. We generate our need, and then we start looking for a path through this. 
whenever we receive a request to decide whether it can be immediately granted, we check to see if it's available, and then we pretend that we had honored it, and we then analyze the system to see if we are in a safe state. So we pretend that we've honored the request and then analyze. If after we pretend to honor the request, we find that we're in an unsafe state, then we will not deny the request, but postpone the request. We will make the process wait. So it's going to wait till the resources can be allocated and still leave the system in a safe state. That's our goal. Want to be able to leave the system in a safe state. So we won't deny the request. We will simply wait. So we will have waiting, but it will not be an infinite wait as if we were in a deadlock. We will have a finite wait while we wait for other processes to finish and release what they're holding. Once they release what they're holding, then we should have a safe path through the system to be able to allocate other things.